السلام عليكم good afternoon my name is Ahmed Al Hadidi emergency medicine consultant today we will start new course about ECG interpretation and we'll start with the first presentation ECG background uh, ECG started on 1842 with Italian scientist Carlo Mucci who realized that electrical activity or electricity is associated with heartbeat on 1876 uh, Irish scientist analyzed the electrical pattern of frog's heart. On 1895, the godfather of ECG, William Einhoven, uh, credited for the invention of ECG. And this was the first ECG invented by William Einhoven. And on 1906, using the string electrometer ECG, William Einhoven started to diagnose some cardiac disease or heart disease. On 1924, uh, Nobel Prize uh, for Physiology and Medicine given to William Einhoven for the work on ECG. Uh, this was the first ECG and how to do first ECG with a person sitting on a chair and putting both arms and left leg on a jar of uh, sand. On 1938, American Heart Association and Cardiac Society of Great Britain defined and started to use the chest leads and define the position for each chest lead from V1 to V6. On 1942, uh, Emmanuel Goldberger uh, invented the augmented leads by increasing or doubling the voltage of unipolar leads 50%. On 2005, we started uh, to use the wireless transmission of ECG. What is an ECG? ECG or electrocardiogram is representation of electrical events of cardiac cycle. Each event has a specific wave and uh, electrical, each electrical current generated by the heart is spread through the body uh, and can be measured by electrodes placed on a body surface and result tracing is called electrocardiogram. Electrocardiograph is a machine that records the activity of the heart. Why we need to understand 12 lead ECG and why we need to attend this course? Because nowadays uh, there is advancement in treatment for some disease which depends on ECG like acute coronary syndromes, ST, elevation, myocardial infarction, very important to interpret the ECG. Uh, whatever happens, whatever the technology, your interpretation will be much better than the machine itself. No, it's non-invasive uh, uh, test, non-expensive and bedside investigation. It's painless, it's harmless, and it takes only a few minutes to be done. And for all of these, some institutes consider 12 lead ECG as a basic uh, uh, tool like vital signs, like blood pressure uh, measurements. Uh, with ECG, we can diagnose all types of arrhythmia, most of uh, uh, all types of arrhythmia can be diagnosed by ECG, bundle branch block, heart block, chamber hypertrophy can be diagnosed by ECG still, uh, but of course still the gold standard is uh, electro uh, echocardiography, myocardial ischemia and infarction, of course, uh, as I said before, ST elevation, myocardial infarction, pericarditis, uh, some electrolyte disturbance like potassium or calcium, abnormality, some drug toxicity like uh, digoxin or tricyclic antidepressant can be diagnosed with ECG and some congenital abnormality of conductions. Uh, what, is the, uh, what is the depolarization? Depolarization is a spread of electrical stimuli through the muscle itself, through the uh, membrane of the muscle. Repolarization is the return of heart muscle cell to their resting state. If we measure depolarization and repolarization for each muscle, so we'll have the action potential, which consists of depolarization, plateau, and repolarization of the muscle. So each muscle or each cell in the heart has a special action potential. For example, this is for the SC node. This one is for the ventricular muscle itself. If we collect all depolarization and repolarization for each 
muscle cell in the heart. This is the one for SC node, and this is the action potential for the atrial cell. This is the action potential for the EV node and Purkinje fibers and ventricle. If you collect the action potential for all of these, we will have the resulting ECG with the shape we know, which is the B wave, QRS, and T wave. Each wave itself represents an action in the electrical activity of the heart. B wave for the atrial depolarization, QRS for the ventricular depolarization, and the T wave represents the ventricular repolarization. We uh, print the ECG on ECG paper. This ECG paper consists of small squares and large squares. Uh, each large square consists of five small squares on horizontal line and five small squares on vertical line. So uh, horizontal line represents uh, uh, time. So each small square will represent a point or uh, uh, 0.04 second or 40 millisecond, and each large square will represent 0.2 second or 20 milli, uh, uh, millisecond. Sorry. Each uh, uh, and also we have vertical axis. Each small square in vertical axis will represent 0.1 millivolt. Each uh, uh, two large squares will represent one millivolt. Uh, again, uh, horizontal axis will represent time. Each large square will be 0.2 second, and for one second will be five large squares. Uh, again, uh, for the horizontal line, it, we record the timing. So we record time of the PR interval, interval, which is from the beginning of the B wave till the beginning of the complex, it represents time and the QT interval from the beginning of the complex till the end of the T wave, it represents time. Calibration, what we mean by calibration, it's adjustment of the velocity and magnitude of the ECG machine on the ECG paper. Standard calibration means uh, one large square width and two large square height. So the height will be two large squares, which is one millivolt, and the width will be one large square, which is 0.2 second and, or five small squares. What will happen if we used another standardization or st uh, sorry, another calibration? So half sized calibration, you will have a small, smaller QRS complexes and smaller, smaller waves, which might misinterpreted as uh, 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 low voltage ECG, double size calibration might be uh, uh, have a, a large size QRS and large size, size uh, uh, waves, which might be interpreted as hypertrophy. Thank you so much, and see you next uh, lecture in ECG course.